I'm sure for some hockey fans, black history and hockey history only intersect at a handful of noteworthy moments. Moments like Willie O'Ree breaking the color barrier in 1958. Grant Fuhr becoming the first black player to have his name etched up the Stanley Cup. Grant Fuhr, hard to imagine that he it is just four years into his National Hockey League career. But Jerome McGinley become the first visible minority to lead the league in scoring in 2002. Well, all about that shot. But BIPOC contributions to hockey date back nearly as far as the origin of the game itself. 22 years before the NHL was founded, a group of black Baptist churches in the maritime provinces of Canada created the Color Hockey League. From 1895 until 1930, black men from Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island competed for teams like the Africville Seasides, the Dartmouth Jubilees, and the Halifax Eurekas. These men played the game with a degree of speed and athleticism organized hockey hadn't seen before, pioneering many skills commonly seen in today's game. Next time you watch Shea Weber score a blast from the point, Shea Weber with a rocket from downtown. Think of Eddie Martin, the former captain of the Eurekas, who took the first documented slap shot in 1906. Rules in most other leagues at the time prevented players from lifting their sticks above their waist. The Colored Hockey League was also the first league to allow goaltenders to drop to the ice and stop the puck. The butterfly technique wouldn't fully take hold in the NHL until a half century later when Patrick Waugh revolutionized modern goaltending. While it's important to remember the BIPOC pioneers at all levels of hockey during Black History Month, let's also use the time to appreciate hockey's future because it has never looked so vibrant. This past October, Quinton Byfield became the highest drafted black player in NHL history. The second pick in the 2020 entry draft, Quinton Byfield. The Florida Panthers hired Brett Peterson as their assistant general manager, the first person of color to ever hold this position. And the NHL has an unprecedented number of diversity and inclusion efforts underway. So this Black History Month, let's appreciate forerunners like Willie, Grant and Jerome for the ground they broke but we can also confidently look ahead to the future trailblazers the game is working so hard to cultivate. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fan Money Podcast. It's your boy Simbawi Nibai Jr., aka TK, along with my man Omar Williams. We call him O and Denise Obi. We call her D Nice. Y'all say what's up to the peeps. Hello, hello. What's up, good people? It is another lovely Wednesday morning, and y'all know how we do. We jump right in and get things started. But before we do, it is Affirmation Wednesday, and we're gonna get our affirmations in and out the way. We get our, get our day started and moving. So it's uh, you're getting the replay of this, whether it's whether audio or video, it's affirmation that day, daytime, nighttime, afternoon, or whatever time you're listening or watching. Are you ready? Let's get it. Today will be a good day. Today will be a great day. Today will be an awesome day. Today will be an amazing day. Today will be a phenomenal day. Today will be stress-free. Today will be a stress-less day. Today, I will overcome all barriers that want to block my progress. Today, all circumstances, issues, and situations will work in my favor. Today, all things will line up for my good. I am a go-getter. I am victorious. I am triumphant. I am an overcomer. I never lose. I either win or I learn. I take authority over this day. I will dominate this day. I will conquer this day. And everything I've spoken into this day will happen as I have affirmed because I am more than a conqueror. Let's get it started so today we started the show off a little different today we had a little uh video slash audio 
uh, play for you guys. If you haven't noticed already, we are talking about hockey today. Now, we're talking about sports in a different light today because uh, we're not talking about stats. We're not talking about, you know, um, any particular game we've seen or watched. We're talking about history today. And so one thing that I stumbled upon was uh, the history of hockey uh, from a Canadian standpoint. And so um, I happened to stumble across, across this uh, league that started in, in Canada uh, back in the 1800s, more of the late 1800s going to the 1900s. And this league that I stumbled upon was actually a league of all black players. A league of all black players. And the name of this league was called the Colored Hockey League. And so that interested me. And I figured, hey, let's talk about that because I never knew there was a league in Canada that started long before the NHL or even colored baseball. So just real quick before we dive into this, I'm going to give you guys just some history, a real quick, you know, I guess, bio of this uh, colored hockey league. So this league was founded in 1895 in Nova Scotia, Canada, by a group of four black Baptist church leaders and black intellectuals. Their names were Pastor James Borden of Dartmouth Church, James Kenny, who was a lawyer and community leader, James Robinson Johnson, and who was a lawyer, and uh, Henry Sylvester Williams, who was a Pan-African organizer. And so this league was constructed to attract young Black men to Sunday worship services with the promise of a hockey game between rival churches after the services. How interesting is that? That's amazing. That's crazy, right? That's crazy. Yeah. So according to the Canadian Encyclopedia, this is a quote, with the influence of the Black nationalism movement and with rising interest in the sport of hockey, the league came to be seen as a potential driving force for the equality of Black Canadians, end quote. So this league had two teams. It was the uh, Halifax Eurekas and the Amherst Royals. And eventually, over time, uh, a dozen teams and over 400 Black Canadian players from across Nova Scotia and the surrounding areas in that Canada area uh, played in this ice hockey competition league. Now, the first ever colored hockey league game was played on February 27th, 1895, at the Dartmouth Curling Rink. The Eurekas and the Jubilees ended their game in a 1-1 tie. Attendance was strong, but they say that for some playoff and championship games, the crowd would draw over a 1,000 spectators. I'm going to stop right there. Because, number one, as far as black history is concerned, I've never heard about this. And as far as the history of hockey is concerned, I've never heard about this. So I'm going to throw this out to O and Denise and, and, and y'all give me your thoughts. What were your thoughts when you first heard about the, the colored hockey league that started in Canada that we've never heard about that happened long before the NHL even came along? Well, my my first thoughts were like when I was doing like, you know, the video you played and the research that I did, I was surprised all the different things that they brought to the game. Like the slap shot or right. the butt or the, the the goalie getting down on the ice. I'm like, I'm thinking that's natural to hockey. And apparently it comes from the, the, the color hockey league. Um, and another thing that struck me, it, and I did, like I said, it, I had no clue about this. Just the fact that they use it as a tool to get people to come to church. That right. part right there to me was like, wow. So yeah, pastors playing and like what they call them, high intellectual guys. They were uh black intellectuals, and like black lawyers, intellectual guys. stuff so, like that. Yeah. So it wasn't just your average jock. You know, they say jocks can't think, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it was <laughs> so it was it was actually smart men who were actually really good 
at hockey. That was amazing to me. I mean, a great marketing tool. Great marketing, man. Great marketing tool. So, Denise, what you got? I would say, yeah, I think it was I definitely eye-opening, especially as so I like to watch hockey sometimes, but I also played field hockey. And, like, um, knowing that the sports kind of, like, they, like, they're basically the same thing. But it's just amazing to see, like, the different, like, the different positions, things that were added. And why wasn't it, like, you know, brought up in the news more, especially during Black History Month? Like, why were we taught about this? And even that slap slash part, that's, like, one of the best things you could ever do in field hockey. So, but I'm glad it came from us. I'm glad it came from us. <laughs> I, I would say, I mean, I would say the the fact we didn't learn about it in black history is that we just we didn't know. Right. Like the historians like didn't know about this stuff. Like this is I'm not even sure when this came to like public, you know, information, but I just learned about this like over the summer, literally. I'm like, this sounds very interesting to talk about. So you, you look at it and you're kind of like, okay, it's something that was started in Canada, of all places, not even in the U.S., in Canada, not Africa, anywhere else. It started in Canada. I mean, Africa, I guess it wouldn't be cold enough to really do hockey, so I guess it wouldn't start there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, okay, that, that's that's uh, obvious. But in Canada, it started. And then to see that this is something that would draw thousands of people to, like, playoff and, and championship games, like, that's crazy. I, I actually... For the, for the most part, I actually like the fact that the churches use this as a tool to get quote unquote men yes. to come to church with the promise of having games afterwards. Yeah. Somebody out there might want to write that down. Now, I'm not saying you got to do hockey, you can do whatever sport you want to do, but you might want to be like, hey, we do have a gym. When church is over, let's go play some ball. I'm just saying, hey, we got a field outside. When we get done, let's go play some flag football. Now, there is an organization out there called Upward Sports. And Upward Sports is a sports organization that uses, you know, Christian values and scripture to impart that into the youth that join this league. And they've been around for a long time. And so my, my church, we actually just started doing that this year and so upward sports is another great way to get families to come and to be a part of you know the the church community and it's also a great way for the church to be a part of its surrounding community so again this is just a little tidbit if you're a church that's struggling with attendance <laughs> you may want to offer sports after your church service to get more men per se or members in general just to come and be a part now of course we're not trying to you know you know hoard members but you know just saying if it's a good marketing strategy and then once you once you get a man you kind of go from there so really up to you um i will say this too when i read this um i wanted to get kind of into more of uh some uh really great information that kind of comes along with this. So, oh, you mentioned it already about the slap shot, right? Mm -hmm. And then about the goalie being able to get down and block the, and, and block the puck. So some other, you know, information we want to let you guys know. So, of course, it was formed in 1895. But the formation of it actually predates the NHL, which is the National Hockey League, 20 years prior. So this happened in form 20 years prior the NHL even forming itself, okay? The league also proceeds the Negro Baseball League in the U.S. So and what makes it interesting is that the league was actually formed by, again, a Baptist church who wanted to get more men into their church or members in general. And, and the, the league said that they use the hockey as a way to of advancing young black men to a level that would be equal to their counter white brothers. Right. And it was kind of like the game itself would instill the qualities of leadership, community, organization, pride, teamwork, and determination, which I think in any sport engulfs that. You know what I mean? Leadership, community, organization, pride, teamwork, determination. And for these particular, you know, 
leaders to think that, hey, let's do hockey to, to get uh, to kind of uh, equip these men to go out into the community and to be uh, better men and to be leaders. I think that's just genius. You know, um, other thing, too, is where it says that the, the color hockey league is credited by some as being the first league to allow the goaltender to leave his feet to cover a puck in the 1900s. So we all talked about that earlier. And it says uh, it also was where the uh, slap shot was uh, supposed to be have uh, been created by a guy named Eddie Martin in 1906. Right. So and they said the slap shot, I mean, in hockey, that's like that's like a, a home run in baseball. You know what I mean? Or, you it's know, a uh, yeah, it's a, yeah. yeah, it's technique, you know, your home run or, you know, your 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 40 yard, 50 yard pass in the NFL. You know, it's it's like that one thing that kind of when it happens, you know, that 40 yard pass ends up being a touchdown that that home run comes in in soccer. If you're kicking it, you know, 30 yards out and it goes in the goal, like that's the slap shot of hockey. You know what I mean? And so it's it's one of those big plays that can really change anything. So, you guess what you want to say, oh? Yeah, let me add this too, man. I feel like, I don't know if you know, are too familiar with the ABA. Yeah. So, like, the ABA, a lot of the NBA you see now was because of the the, uh, the ABA. Mm-hmm. It allowed you to dunk the ball and um, the running gun style, fast break. Right. You know, they even created the dunk contest. Right. So, I'm looking at this and I'm like. Very creative. Very creative. It's like we added a little flavor to the game. <laughs> right, right. Because it's not that they created hockey, but they created another type of hockey. Like more, it wasn't as um, cookie cutter. Like, again, you the, the goalie couldn't leave his feet to block the puck. Like, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and you, or you couldn't raise your, the reason the slap shot, they, they, they existed because the, the actual original hockey rules, they couldn't raise their puck or their, their stick above right. their waist. Right. Well, in this CHL league, apparently you could. You know what I'm saying? Like you could yeah. actually get some flavor off. I'll, right. I'll put right. it that way. <laughs> you can gotcha. put your little, you know, you put your little sauce on it. Now exactly. they're using the sauce. The the the, the plate it only existed what 40 years? They 40, they resisted 40, something like that. Years. Yeah. But between 19, I'm 80, sorry, 80, 80, 90 90 95 to like 30. 1925, 1930, something like that. Yeah. So th- 35 years of sauce, and they still using it to this day. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. Denise, you got anything? I would say, yeah, I was just agreeing. And it's because even in, um, I know, like with the past, don't go past your waist thing, that's hard sometimes in hockey, especially <laughs> both ice and field. So definitely, I wish we could have that rule, but I'm grateful that somebody said, hey, no, let's. Let's give it some more uh, flavor in it. So, I agree. So, so real quick question, Denise. No slap mm-hmm. shots. No, uh, you can't raise your your stick above your waist in field hockey. Nope. No oh, wow. Okay. Really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. And if you do, they'll uh, they'll give you a foul for it. Okay. Because wow. then it's kind of like becoming lacrosse almost. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So. Oh, that, I, I see how that right. could be that. I yeah. got you. Okay. 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 It almost kind of reminds me, like, what is it? Is it croquet? Where you hit the the ball through the through the hoops or whatever? That's is uh, that croquet or is that cricket? Cricket, cricket, cricket. 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 You got cricket. it. Cricket. There we go. Cricket, it's cricket. Yeah. And so yeah. a cricket, you know, like you can't do a golf swing. You know what I mean? But you can, you can, you know, do that little, that little putt. You can't do the golf swing though. You know what I mean? So it's like those mm-hmm. little small little, you know, nuances you can't really do. I'll take a little break. We'll come back. When we come back, we're going to talk about um, how all this kind of rose to fame in Canada, per se, and then how it all kind of came crashing down. Fan Money Podcast will be right back. Are you looking for an apparel company that's positive, uplifting, and truly cares about you? Then look no further. Frame of Mind, Inc., an apparel brand company, impresses on individuals to think positive thoughts, say positive things, and do positive deeds. Get positive apparel, such as t-shirts, hoodies, and wristbands for children, teens, and adults in various colors and sizes. Customized services include logo and t-shirt design, screen printing, and embroidery for individuals, families, schools, 
for-profit and non-profit organizations. You can reach Frame of Mind, Inc. at 302-689-3499 or visit their website at www.frameofmindinc.com. Frame of Mind, Inc. Think it. Speak it. Achieve it. All right, we are back with the second half of the show. Before we left, we're talking about how the Colored Hockey League, or as O put it, the CHL, uh, came to be in 1895 in the uh, Nova Scotia in Canada. Uh, the league had two teams starting out. Eventually, over time, there became about a dozen teams over 400 Black Canadian players uh, playing, uh, drawing spectators in attendance for playoff and championship games of about 1,000 people. Um, it ran, uh, started in 1895. Uh, a lot of it uh, started before, uh, so all of it actually started about 20 years prior to the NHL and uh, before the Negro Baseball League in the United States. And uh, started by some Baptist pastors and uh, intellectuals in the state of Canada in 1895. So right here, we're going to talk about now about how all this kind of <clears throat> came to a close. And that's to me, it's kind of the sad thing when it came to a close and, and not that it came to a close, but uh, how it came to a close. And so so the league, it ran from like 1895 to about the 1930s, like the early 1930s. And while the league was kind of thriving, unfortunately, politics and racism kind of came in and it became an obstacle. And what started happening was that it became like this five year legal battle of you know, being able to use hockey rinks, being able to have practices, being able to have space to kind of do the things they were doing. And what, what happened was the government kind of put pressure on uh, um, on white investors and white business owners who then decided to say, hey, you know what? We're going to uh, not allow this league to use or rent out, you know, our ice rinks or our ice spaces for their practices or for their games. And so when that happened, because it was getting a lot of press, like it was actually, it was getting huge press in Canada. And when the government started to get involved with things, it decided that it wanted the local newspapers to stop covering the league, which kind of, again, it brings the marketing down and brings the advertising down and everything kind of just starts to uh, lose speed. And so by the early 1930s, the league, just kind of faded away, you know, like and just never to rise again. And so one thing that I do want to say here is that um, we, we know the history of racism. Like we know all this. So it's not, we don't need for us to really go dive deep into this, but let's, let's kind of talk in a more broader sense is that racism exists everywhere. And it's not just, just black and white. It exists in other countries it exists in other states, other cities, other you know municipalities, and it's like it's it's everywhere. And so the sad thing is that something that was done in a positive way, in a positive manner, that was going to that was looking to again raise up leaders, raise up you know um, those who wanted to be better the community, organizations, teamwork, determination, um, was looked upon as something that was kind of rising up in a in a negative way. Um, I'm not sure why that happened. I'm not sure why um, these uh, politicians and others decided that they wanted to, to, you know, block out the Colored Hockey League as they did. Um, not sure why. I mean, we can all have our own, you know, optimisms and opinions about why it might happen, but we don't really know. The history doesn't, doesn't tell us why. And if it does tell us, we haven't dug deep enough to find out why that happened. Um any thoughts on how this went from being where it was to being just something that kind of faded away and just was never to be seen again? Don't be scared. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Let's keep it going. All right. No, I, I, I just say, man, I, so I read that um, it was resources pretty much. Like you said, uh, investors backed out. Mm -hmm. And the government put a little pressure on them because rinks and uh, ice time. And since they were black and, you know, it's around that time where racism was really popping. Mm -hmm. if that, oh, I don't even know if I should have said it that way, but 
<laughs> it was it really was, active. It was, was, it was really active back right. then. Um, right. They had obstacles. So make a long story short, what I'm trying to say is, sounds like any good work or anything that's innovative or anything new needs resources, man. Mm. And if the resources run out, it can it can just it can fall away or it can it can go to nothing. So like to tie it into kind of my man prime time, right? He went to a school with more resources. I know people were mad at him for it, but he said he could do a bigger work there because why? Resources. More resources. It's just you, you, the resources leave, the money, the funding, the 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 um influence. Because even influence yeah. comes with resources. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. I may know the president at this small school, but if I know the president at the bigger school, he has a little bit more influence than the president at the small school. So. That's he a good get point. Me in places, huh? That's a good point. Exactly. So he can get me in places, and again, it sounds like everything kind of backed away from them guys, right. and they kind of ran out of, they ran out of stuff, or ran out of, you know, places to go, money to use. You know what I'm saying? So, and it disbanded. Denise, say so let's just let's just start with one thing: hockey equipment is not cheap. <laughs> like the skills, the <laughs> blades, everything. So I definitely understand like why it's not why it was basically not funded. But also I think like they should get it going now. Like if you can look at the WNBA, like that wasn't I don't I personally still don't think that it's not supported as much as it needs to be, but I think they should start getting it going, teaching some of these guys that know how to play, know how to do hockey. I think they should bring it back. Even for field hockey players, bring, show them how to bring it to the ice and play, and kind of bring back the game and the love for it. And just, you know, everybody says, "Oh, I'm pro black. I'm this, this, and this." So it's like, let's see if you can put the pen to paper and not just word to mouth. It's something I like that. Uh, this is a challenge. A challenge. <laughs> Put the pen to oh, paper. <laughs> can I can I add to that to add a little bit something to that sure. too? Sure. Mm-hmm. How when Denise was saying how um equipment is expensive. And that's what happens with a lot of those, like a lot of the sports where you don't see that much African American or minority participation, it's just flat out you're priced out of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like um, like swimming, it's expensive. Mm-hmm. Hockey, it's expensive. Baseball, my boy called me the other day. And said bats for an eight year old son, he's getting a bat for like three, four hundred. Crazy, like, that's yeah. crazy. Huh? Like you know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, back to resources, man. It's like yeah. you put like the D said, put pen to paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I um worked with a lady and she like she had I think three boys, and she came into our store one day and she's like I had to buy three bats because they were starting baseball. And she spent over eight hundred dollars on the bats, yeah. and I'm like, Ooh, my kid would be making their bat at home. That's it. <laughs> you know, that's not it. That's not listen, it. listen. The resources is one thing that can make or break anything. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, it's very unfortunate that that, that happened. Um, it, 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 the, the great thing about it is we actually have the information now to actually research how all this went down. And then how you know things happen, how they came to be. So just a real quick, you know, tidbit for you guys to kind of if you want to dig deeper into this if you'd like to. We'll leave the links and the information for the podcast too, so you guys can check the articles out yourself. But in uh 2004, uh, the hockey researchers, um, who was it, Daryl, I believe it says Daryl George Fosty released a book entitled Black Ice. The Lost History of the Colored Hockey League of the Merry Times, 1895 to 1925. And it says the Hockey Hall of Fame also has an exhibit that includes information on the Colored Hockey League. So if you ever want to look uh, more into uh, the CHL or the Colored Hockey League, you can get the book entitled Black Ice, The Lost History of the Colored Hockey League of the Merry Times. And if you really want to, if you're not a, a reader, you can also look at the documentary that actually is out on the uh, Colored Hockey League. So on January 2020, uh, the Canadian Post issued a postage stamp featuring the 1906 champion 
Halifax, Eureka, to commemorate the history of the black hockey players in Canada. History of the League is profiled in Daryl Foskey's and, uh, book, but also the book now has a documentary that came out in 2022 called Black Ice, based off the book that Daryl Foskey wrote. So you can actually look that up as well. Check that out. Um, I believe that, um, I think it's CBS Morning News did an interview uh, with a guy that actually made the documentary Black Ice. You can check that out as well. So there's a lot of resources out there. You just literally type in Colored uh, Hockey League, and boom, like there it is. Um, I was floored by the fact that um, I will say this, that, that you don't hear more about this from an NHL standpoint. You know, kind of like, because if you go to, uh, there's a site out there that's it's on, on the NHL site that actually has some information about this, but it's kind of like it was never really kind of talked about or mentioned. And again, it's, it's not the fault. It was just a matter of, hey, if this is a part of the history of hockey, why don't we know about it? And, you know, and here's the thing, like, we don't know, you know, was it something that someone wanted to cover up? It's something that wasn't in, somebody felt was not important. Like, I don't know. But now we know that hockey started in Canada in 1895 with these African-American brothers who wanted to help other men uh, become better men and, and to help them, uh, you know, have camaraderie and to be leaders and to, in their community or wherever they may be. So. I think that was a powerful story because it wasn't like they were just getting together just to get together and have fun. Like there was, and that, that, that can have purpose too, because everybody needs to have fun. You know, everybody, like we all get older and we grow up and we kind of forget that fun is something that we need to have, you know, fun and the right ramifications, you know, certain, you know, there's certain fun things you might want to stay away from because they're not healthy for you, but we all need to have fun. We all have that child still inside of us, but, uh, this is an awesome topic to talk about today. We wanted to give you guys the information to uh, continue to look into that and to dig deeper if you'd like to. Uh, before we go, any last words from either O or Denise before we kind of wrap this up? I'm good, man. Okay. O was good. He got the Eagles <laughs> thing on. The Eagles are still yeah, kicking butt right now, so he's good. He's good. You know what I mean? <laughs> Still smiling. The Bengals, you know, they, they finally got a W, so I'm good there. You know what I mean? So it's all good. It's all good. Um, I will say this, though, that um, in the documentary, you, you will see a number of uh, black athletes who play hockey or have played hockey. And you get you get to hear some of their stories of what they dealt with and are currently dealing with in Hockey, whether it's NHL, whether it's college, you know, or different league outside the NHL, um, and see their see their perspectives on um, how they get treated, you know, and how things are said to them, and how they dealt with things growing up, you know, playing hockey as as a, uh, you know a black athlete. So definitely check that out. Um, it'll be a great read or a great documentary to look at and view. Um, I haven't viewed the whole documentary myself. I'm actually going to do that um, this week. I want to check it out and see uh, what all that looks like because um, I want to learn more about Black history. And I also want to learn more about how hockey got started and how it evolved into what it is today. Um, and I'm going to leave it right there. So you can always catch us on social media with our uh, videos on my social media page. You can also catch us on my LinkedIn page and our YouTube uh, business channel. Audio-wise, you can catch us on uh, our website at fofmpodcast.com. Also catch us on Apple uh, Podcasts, Spotify, and mostly anywhere else podcasts are done. You can follow us, uh, get on what we're doing on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, actually, the the uh, let me change that. The uh, Facebook page where you can find the video is not my Facebook page. We transferred that from my page to our actual Facebook page for Frame of Mind Inc. Catch us there. If you want to get in contact with us, you can contact us through email at f of m podcast at frame of mind inc.com. That's f of m f o f m podcast at frame of mind inc.com or give us a call at 302 
689-3499. And for all of you listening and or viewing, continue to think it, speak it, and achieve it. And until next time, myself, oh, and Denise, we holla. Thank you for joining the Frame of Mind, Inc. podcast. And as always here at Frame of Mind, Inc., think positive thoughts, say positive things, and do positive deeds. As our tagline says, think it, speak it, achieve it. See you next time. Don't forget to check us out on the web at www.frameofmindinc.com where you can browse our online apparel store, listen to some of our original music and production services, as well as view our videos and projects we've done for our clients and customers.